be solved. In this subtopic, I like to give you the motivation, the reason. Yeah. Sorting with special requirements. At this point, we have learned several sorting algorithms. Yeah. Each one has different focus. Yeah. So in the real world applications, we need to consider what, you know, for a given application, what properties is the most important? Then based on that, you can select suitable sorting algorithms. Yeah. All right, so here, we need to consider some special requirements. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The, the, still the same sorting problem, yeah. but other than the original problem description, we need to add some special requirements. Yeah. The first one, the worst case efficiency should be in big theta of n log n. That means the worst case should not be too bad, the worst case should be under control. Yeah. And actually, this n log m, it's a pretty good efficiency function. Yeah. So we want to control to make our worst case have relatively good efficiency like this one, n log n, yeah, big theta of n log n, yeah. So that's the first requirement. Uh, second requirement, yeah. And in this one, uh, our merge sort has this property, yeah. In all the sorting algorithms we have learned so far, only the merge sort has this property, okay? Yeah, so you can see it's not easy to get this property. Yeah. The second requirement, in place. Yeah. In place, let me review the meaning of this in place. Here it means the in place algorithm, not in place elements. In place elements, so frequently we use that meaning. Yeah when an array is sorted, all the elements in that array are in place. Yeah. But here we do not use that meaning. Here we are talking about if an algorithm is in place. So what's the meaning of that? An algorithm is in place, it means the extra space used. Yeah. Remember last time, for the quick sort, the extra space. Oh, uh, I noticed some problem. I I forgot the recording, right? I forgot the recording. Oh, yeah. Let me extra space used for this algorithm should be in big theta of one. So that's the property. Yeah. Another good property we like to have, this algorithm should not use a lot of extra space. Yeah. Number two. Yeah. Number three, that's a new one. That's the one we didn't talk about it before. That's the maintain dynamic data efficiently. Yeah, that's probably very useful in the real world applications because you many times our data comes in dynamically. Dynamically. Yeah. So that means when we run our algorithm, the data keeps coming in. Yeah. Come and go frequently. 
in that pattern. Yeah. And uh, that means we need to keep doing insertion and deletion for our new for our data items in the array deletion insertion yeah. keep doing that yeah. but when we do that we want to do it efficiently yeah. so here you can see we need a new sorting algorithm that satisfies all these three requirements. So you can see for the current sorting algorithms, we do not have anyone that satisfies all these three requirements. So we need a new one. So we need to design a new sorting algorithm that have all of these three properties. Okay. All right, yeah. And this dynamic data, we need to consider a lot of factors. In order to maintain dynamic data efficiently, we need to consider a lot of factors. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we need to have a little more discussion because when you insert a new data item how do you make it efficiently okay yeah because if you just do some straightforward insertion think about straightforward insertion okay yeah yeah and it's very likely you need to do this much work, big theta of n. Because you need to insert it somewhere in the array. Then you need to, you know, shift. You need to find some room for this new element. Then, like our insertion sort, you need to shift some of the elements. If you do that, then it is very likely the cost you need to pay this much cost, a big theta of n cost. Yeah. Actually, we're not very happy about this insertion yeah, because we feel the cost is too high. We like to have better than this one. Now, we may like to have the log n function, the binary search. If we can do the binary search, that kind of insertion, then the cost is this much, much better than big theta of n. So we are satisfied with the log function insertion. Okay, yeah. So that's what we mean efficiently. All right, yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's the insertion case. Yeah. But we need to think about how to make that happen. To make that happen, you can see because here I mentioned that binary search, right? I mentioned that binary search. So you need to make the data structure related to the binary search. Yeah. The binary search structure, yeah, actually we refer it to binary tree. A binary search tree, a tree. All right, yeah. yeah. So we need to have that data structure. Yeah. All right, idea. So let's talk about how to make it happen for this new data structure. Yeah. All right. So we want to build it around a binary tree structure. Yeah. 
when we have a binary tree structure, then it's possible to get the search exertion operation in this big theta of log n, log base two, log n. Yeah. All right. Design of data structure. We need to find uh, fix the details of the data structure. Yeah. Make it as simple as possible. When we construct the data structure, we want to make it as simple as possible. Yeah. All right, so let's consider the candidates we can choose among some relatively simple data structures. One is array. We're familiar with array. We have a lot of experience using array. So array is our first candidate. The second one, linked list yes yeah because why we think about linked list because when we talk about a binary tree we need to maintain the relationship among many nodes in the binary tree right and the relationship parent child relationship how do you store parent-child relationship. Yeah. So you may think of link in a list way. Yeah, because you can use some links to provide relationship among different nodes. Link in a list. Yeah. So that's another candidate. Yeah. But when you compare these two candidates, so you can see linking list is much more complicated than the array, right? Array is very simple. Yeah. So when we manipulate data in array, it is very simple. Yeah. But think about if we need to manipulate data stored inside a linking list, it could be very complicated, right? Yeah. So that's the main problem for the linked list. Yeah. All right. So if it's possible, we like to choose array as the underlying structure, underlying storage, basic structure for this new data structure if it's possible. If not, then we have to choose more complicated data structure. Yeah. But here we hope it's doable for an array. Yeah. So we can make array as our underlying storage structure. Yeah. Can we use an array directly? Then it's hard because if you use array directly, how can you store a binary tree inside an array? Right? Yeah. Because in array, we only store elements in the sequential order. Sequential order. And in a binary tree, we have many levels. Top root level, Below the root level, we have many tree levels, right? Yes. So that kind of structure is not available in the array by default. Okay? Yeah. So in order to do that, we need to do a lot of work. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And another thing, we need to maintain dynamic data. Yeah, that means we need to add new data or delete old data frequently. Okay, frequently. That kind of operations we need to consider. Okay, how to make insertion and a deletion relatively easy. 
So you can see for tasks like these, yeah, it's non-trivial, right? So we need to find some good solution for this problem. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And uh, also maintain the data. We need to do operations, right? Yeah. We need to define some operations to maintain the data. And those operations should be efficient. Yeah. Should not be too slow. Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. But if we just work on an array directly, then those maintenance, those operations won't be efficient. Yeah, because you need to shift array elements to make a room for a new element. That operation is not efficient. Okay, yeah, so that kind of operation, you won't get big theta of log n function. Yeah. So we have to do some special work on our data structure. Yeah. All right. So let's look at how do we modify? How do we add a new functionalities to an ordinary array? Yeah, we need to add some new features in an ordinary array. Yeah. All right. The goal here, we need to build a binary tree structure in the array. That's the goal, yeah. The question, how to modify the array? Yeah. So how do we make an array to store different tree levels in a binary tree? That's the first question we need to answer yeah. multiple levels of a binary tree you can you can find a convenient way to store in the array yeah all right yeah all right so let's consider data stored in the array. Yeah. At the beginning, we can assume it is sorted. Yeah, it is sorted. All right. Or, yeah, because we need to organize our data. Yeah. So we like to have it sorted. Yeah. Because if you do not sort it, then it's hard to it is hard to do the binary search, right? Yeah. Because in order to make your insertion faster, so you may like to do the binary search. The binary search requires that the data is sorted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Here, let's just consider our initial array. The data is sorted. Because after that, we may have new data items. Yeah. Then you need to fix the order after you get a new data. Yeah. All right. So for the when the new data comes in, the data is not all not in order. So you need to do some operations to make it in order. And that operation you want it very efficient. Yeah. So when you do insertion, in the insertion sort, that insertion is big theta of n. That's not good enough. So we want to have a much faster insertion. 
So our target insertion should be the binary search type insertion. And that one, we have a chance to have this big theta of log n. Yeah, so that's our goal. Okay, yeah, all right. So now for the insertion, yeah. So there are two types, linear search type and a binary search type. And the linear search type, we know, too slow, and we like to consider the binary search type, much fa faster type insertion. Yeah. Yeah. But the question, how to make it happen? Yeah. The binary search type. Yeah. So if you have a binary tree, then you have a chance to get a binary search type insertion. Yeah. So we need to figure out the details of that binary tree structure stored inside an array. Okay, yeah. So that's the con main consideration here. Need to introduce a new data structure. Yeah. With array as its underlying data holder, but this array, we need to add some special structure in it. Yeah. So what is that special structure in this array? Yeah. Mainly about this purpose, maintain the parent-child relationship. Because in the original array, if we do not do any special treatment, then we cannot maintain parent-child relationship in a binary tree. Yeah. So we need to add this part. The parent-child, how to design a simple way to store the parent-child relationship in a binary tree in an array. So that's what we need to do here. All right, yeah, okay. 8.2, binary tree structure in array. Yeah. So this time we need to resolve that details, yeah. that kind of details. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so let's start analysis. How to build a binary tree inside an array? Yeah. Here we introduce the heap data structure. Heap data structure. Yeah. So what is this heap data structure? Yeah. Properties we need in this data structure. One, use an array as the underlying storage object. Yeah. That means it is very simple. We can use a simple way to store our data. Yeah. Number two, it should be a near complete binary tree. So what's that near complete binary tree? Yeah. So let me explain a little bit. Yeah. Probably you have some idea here. Yeah. Uh, let me just clarify it. First, you know the complete binary tree, right? Yeah. All the levels of, of your binary tree must be four. Okay. So this, the first level under the root must be four, and the next level also must be four, okay, and so on. Yeah. All, yeah, all levels must be four, that's complete. So if it's a complete binary tree, then the number of nodes should satisfy that power of two minus one. If you look at the 
total number of nodes in a complete binary tree, you should have this relationship. Yeah. Otherwise, you cannot have a binary, a complete binary tree, right? Yeah. For arbitrary n, most likely, you do not have a complete binary tree. Yeah. Then we just do our best to get a complete binary tree. Yeah. Because we try to make we try to make as many levels as possible to be full except the last one. Because the last one, we may not be able to make it full except the last one. Not full. Yeah. Other than the last level, the bottom level, all other levels must be full. That's what we mean near complete binary tree. In this way, for any n number, we can get near complete binary tree structure. Yeah. All right. Look at this example. This is a near complete binary tree. Yeah, because all levels except the bottom level, except the bottom level, all le above the bottom level must be true. Okay, yeah, all right. Probably number three, sufficient space for dynamic data. Yeah. Because, you know, when you declare an array, the array size must be provided, right? But after you add data dynamically, sooner or later, your array size, your array will be full. There is no room for new data item. You may have a situation like that, okay? So you need to consider how to make your underlying storage array able to store new added data items, yeah. sufficient space for dynamic data. Yeah. So this probably, you need to have it, okay? All right, number four, certain relationship among nodes. Yeah, that parent-child relationship. You need to find a way to store, to address that parent-child relationship. Okay, yeah. So if you make you can make a new data structure support all these four properties, then you can make a new sorting algorithm that satisfies all three requirements in our previous slide. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we need to answer these questions. Yeah. The question of how much space is sufficient? Yeah. So in the real world applications, you need to consider this question. How much space is sufficient? If at the beginning, if you allocate a lot of memory space, you may not able to use all allocated space, then you may waste a lot of storage space. Yeah. That's possible. Yeah. So you may not like to allocate too much space at the beginning. Okay, yeah. But when you store more and more data items, sooner or later, you need more space. You need more space on the fly. Right? Yeah. yeah. That means when you maintain 
the dynamic data, you need to monitor your data growing behavior. When the data size is growing pretty fast, you need to get ready to increase the size of your underlying storage array. You need to get ready to do that. Okay? Yeah. All right. But how to do that? Yeah. So here, uh, I may like to describe that idea a little bit. Yeah. Just the idea. Okay? Yeah. All right. How to make array space sufficient for dynamic data? Yeah. Let's answer this question first. It is unknown about the amount of incoming data, right? Nobody knows that. And you cannot make good prediction how much data amount you need to store yeah, because data keeps coming and leaving. Yeah. It's hard to make a good prediction on it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the idea, at the beginning, you assign certain amount of space to an array initially. Yeah. Not too much, yeah, because if too much, you waste a lot of space. Yeah. So at the beginning, just certain amount of space. Yeah. Keep adding data and monitoring the size closely. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And when a threshold is re reached, yeah, because you want to you want to do preparation before your array is full, right? Yeah. yeah. Because after the array is full, then you want to make your storage array larger, you need to do a lot of work. Yeah. But if you can do preparation ahead of time, then you can you can do better. Yeah. Yeah. So what's that idea? Yeah. Because when here the idea Description number three here, when a threshold is reached, a new array with larger size is created and copy the data to the new array. Here, you need to do data copy operation from old array to a new larger array. And that data copy, usually it is expensive. When you make data copy, especially when the data size is large, that copy operation is quite expensive, relatively slow. Okay, yeah. That's, that problem is undesirable. So you, you want to find a better solution for it. Yeah. All right. Because when you make data copy on large array, it could be slow and that would make the response time very slow for your customers. So your customers need to wait for this operation completed. So it may take quite some time. Yeah. So that's not good for your customers, right? Yeah. So here, if I draw a diagram like this, yeah. When you do data copy, look at that, this peak. This peak tells us the response time jumps to a high number, to a larger number, okay? Yeah, 
Before you do data copy, the response time is relatively small number. Yeah, like here, relatively small number, all right? But sooner or later, you need to enlarge your underlying array, storage array. You need to make a large data copy. Then you need to do a lot of work. So you may have the response time jump to a relatively large number, like a peak here. That's not, not a good experience for your customers. So you do not like this problem happen in your applications, right? Yeah. So you want to find a better solution for this problem. Yeah. What's that? The idea is, yeah, because here this the workload is high. Yeah. This peak means the workload is big. The workload is relatively big. If you can spread workload, here you spread workload. Workload evenly, like this one, yep. Before the array is full, yeah, because you do some actions ahead of time. Before the array is full, you start data copy earlier. How about that? You start your data copy earlier. Before the array is full, ahead of time. So then you, when you do data copy, you use slightly more time than before than, than the normal case before, yeah, but the response time increase is not too much, just a little bit. So your customers won't notice that, right? The waiting time for your custom increased slightly, a little bit, but your customers may not be aware of it, right? Because you spread the workload in a relatively wide range. Yeah. So you have you you have some time period to complete that data copy. Okay, that idea. Yeah. So if you can do that, then you can handle the data copy operation gracefully for your customers so your customers will be very happy yeah so you enlarge the underlying storage array the size of it okay yeah but your customers cannot notice that yeah so your customers still feel you know Use, using your applications in a normal way, okay? Yeah, so that's the, the basic idea, yeah. All right, next, 8.3, heap property. Yeah. So this time, we need to work on the data manipulation operations in a heap, yeah. So this heap property, what? special properties we like to have in this heap. Uh, relationship among heap nodes. Yeah. We need to enforce some special relationship among the heap nodes so that the tri parent child relationship is available in a heap. A binary tree is stored in the array. Yeah. Here we need to imagine that visual picture in our mind. Yeah. All right. 
A binary tree, so we need to consider there are many nodes in a binary tree, yeah, located by its index. In an array, each element, we can use an index number to represent its location. Yeah. So here, we still, we use index for the locations of the nodes. Yeah, all right. Then relationship between nodes, how do we address that relationship between two nodes? Yeah, so let's consider relationship between two indices. Two nodes, if we know two locations of two nodes, then we can control those two nodes, right? Yeah. All right, so let's consider a typical parent-child relationship. Yeah. Look at this part of the tree. Yeah. Yeah. In this part, you can see there are three nodes. Yeah. The top one, we call a parent node. P colon. P, the parent node, with index I. P colon I. Yeah, its index corresponds is I. Yeah, I. All right. Then it has a left child, L, capital L colon 2I. That means we want to make the index of of its left child, 2i, 2i, all right? Yeah. And right child, r, r colon 2i plus 1. The index for its right child, 2i plus 1. This is the simple way we arrange our array elements in this way to reflect the parent-child relationship. Yeah. All right, yeah. Because in an array, you cannot store a binary tree, you know, without any special treatment. Here, we use the simple way to help us address the parent-child relationship. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, yeah. Note, yeah, in this design, there is a special property you need to consider. That is the index of the parent P cannot be zero, I cannot be zero. Why? Yeah, because if you use this way to store your array elements, if the index for the parent node is zero, then two I also zero, right? Two I, its left child index also zero, the same location as the parent node. That's not good because we want all these different nodes have different indexes. Yeah. So we need to assume yeah, I cannot be zero or the array element at a zero location cannot be used as any node in this binary tree. You cannot use the first element in the array to store any node of the binary tree. Yeah. Yeah. Because we want to maintain the relationship in this diagram. Yeah. Okay. A of zero is never used. Yeah. Only this element, this position, location is not used. 
So it's not a, a lot of waste, right? Yeah. yeah. So we just use locations with indices greater than zero. Yeah. All right. Now, relationship of, among heap nodes. Yeah. There are two types of heaps. Yeah. The first type we call a max heap, heaps. Second type, min heaps, minimum, maximum and a minimum. Yeah. And for max heap property, we need this property. So that is the array, the value of the parent node, A of I, so that is the value of the parent node, is greater or equal to both the values of its two child nodes, left child node A of 2I, and the right possible right possible, yeah, because the right child may not be available. Okay, so the possible right child nodes and its value. Yeah, so the value in the parent node is greater or equal to the value of any of its child node. Yeah, that's the max heap property. Okay, similarly, the mean heap property. Just the opposite, A of I less than or equal to A of 2I, and A of I also less than or equal to A of 2I plus 1. That's the main heat property. Okay, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. Because when we have the property like this, then we can organize our data in a special way and the special way would allow us to do many operations fast. Insertion operation, sorting operation, many operations fast. Yeah. Okay, yeah, all right. A heap. A max heap example. Let me show you a simple max heap example. Yeah. Look at this binary tree. Yeah. In a circle, the number in the circle represents the value. The value stored in this array with index number. Yeah. Index number outside the circle. Position one, the value is 16, and so on. Yeah. Here you can see the max heap property is satisfied everywhere, everywhere, right? So if you look at this location, max heap is satisfied. If you look at this location, the max heap property is satisfied, and so on. Yeah. Everywhere you can check in this binary tree yeah. and we know this binary tree when we see in the picture here it's a binary tree but when we represent it in a program we use an array to store the values of all these elements so that array structure, linear array structure, yeah. All right. Now, this diagram, I show you how to store these values in this line structure of the array. Yeah. Line structure, but we want to store all levels of data in our binary tree in this array. Yeah. Look at the position number zero, one, two, three, you know, through 10. 
the zero position, we do not store any value. Okay, yeah. Then position one, we store 16 value. Okay, then it's two child nodes, position two and position three, 14 and 10, and they satisfy the binary heat property. Yeah, like that. Then two child nodes for node number two, we store values eight and seven in position four and five, respectively. Yeah, in this way, relationship. Yeah. Then two child nodes of node number three, relationship like this and so on, okay? So we can keep going until we store all the values of in the binary tree in this array. Look at that, yeah. So in this way, you can use a simple line array structure to store a binary tree structure. When you maintain the parent-child relationship in this way, yeah, it works. Okay, you can see this method. You do not need to use link in the list, right? Yeah, you do not use link in the list. Yeah, you just uh, maintain the parent-child relationships based on the array indices. That two i two i plus one, that relationship array indices. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's the simple way. Yeah, all right. Maintaining the heat property. Yeah. So when the heat property is violated due to some operations, exertion, deletion, etc., how to fix it? Yeah, because now you may need to insert a new element. You need to find the right place in the heap. Yeah. yeah. But when you put it somewhere, you may violate the max heap property or main heap property. So you need to fix that. You need to recover your heap. Re recover its normal structure. So you need to do some operations. Yeah. So here we consider that kind of operations. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Look at this uh, typical situation. Parent node P, left and right child nodes. Yeah. A violation occurs locally. Here we assume if there is violation that occurs somewhere in this local structure. We need to fix it. Yeah. All right. Suppose that max heat property is violated in this big red circle. Inside this big red circle, there is some violation. Then we need to fix it first. Okay. Yeah. How to fix it? Yeah, because for the max heap, yeah, here, yeah, we assume the small subtree, the left small subtree, still it has the max heap. Yeah, for the right small subtree, still it is a another max heap. Okay. But here we only fix the violation inside this big circle. Okay, how to fix it? Yeah. Let's do some local fixing operations. We swap the values. We just swap the values. Yeah. And we may need to check violation globally. Yeah. Because when you fix 
your the violation locally you you may alter alter the structures some other places right some other places so you need to fix any violations that is caused by your previous fix operation yeah all right so let's look at the local hippify operation it is a recursion approach yeah. so let's fix this local place or among these three nodes suppose there is a max heap violation all right so we write a pseudo code like this if a of i less than a of 2i yeah so that's the violation the value of the parent node is less than the value of its left child node. So we detect a violation here. Yeah. So we use a variable called the largest. We store the array index to i in this temporary variable. The it's called the largest temporary variable. Yeah. Else, yeah. Else, that means no violation when we check. The relationship between these two nodes, a of i and a b of uh, a of two i, there is no violation. That means a of i is greater or equal to a of two i. If no violation, we just store i value in this largest temporary variable. Okay. Yeah. So that's the first round checking. We need to do another round on the right child. If A of largest, this time because we store that larger index in this largest temporary variable. So if A of largest less than A of 2i plus 1, another violation, right? another violation yeah so we need to store 2i plus 1 in this largest variable yeah because after that we want to check if the largest this variable does not store the index i the, if it's not index i, then we need to do swap operation. We swap a of largest that value with a of i, the parent value. Yeah. A of largest, it could be the right child, could be left child. Their values. Yeah. And after the swap operation, we fix the violation locally. Yeah, this place, yeah, only among these three nodes we fixed. Yeah. All right. But you may cause violation in other places. So you still, you need to check other places. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's the description, abstract operation, the description. And uh, in order to make you see better, we need to run an example. Yeah, a max hippify example. Yeah, but today we do not have enough time. Yeah, so I need to talk about that next time. Next time, this you can see this shaded node. It's a violation because it is greater than. It is not greater than, it is less than its a left child, the, the value of the left child, both left child and the right child values. So we need to fix it. Yeah. All right. To do that, 
we use the max hippify operation describe it in the previous slide yeah but i will run the animation next time yeah next time first i review the max hippify operation first yeah after that then we run max hippify operations to fix any violation in our heap yeah all right so let me stop right here